Well, hello. Welcome to the Basin Bulletin. I'm your host, Devin Caldwell. Thanks for joining us today. Let's take a look at the Bulletin. We have politics in the Basin, high school football, charity fundraiser, and the juried photo show. This past week, I had the opportunity to talk with Morgan Philpot and learn why he is running and why he thinks it is the best choice to represent the Una Basin. Here's what he had to say. I'm running for office for kind of a combination of two reasons. Uh, things that were coming at me from other people, but primarily it was a decision that my wife and I made. And it revolved around uh, where we see America going and what we see is the future for our children. I mean, we've got five kids. And when you look at the projections made by our own government actuaries, they give us about 75 years uh, before we can only afford four things, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and interest on the debt. And I'm sure most Americans would immediately recognize that missing from there is defense, operations, education, you name it. And uh, that's unacceptable. It's unacceptable for our children's future. There's also a poll that came out um, where Americans stated that they did not believe that their children would enjoy a greater standard of living than they do. Again, that's completely unacceptable. Uh, since when did we pass on uh, a legacy that is worse than that which we inherited? And I think the decision before America, and again this gets to really why I'm running, is we have a decision to make. And the decision is, which path will we take as a nation? Will we become just another European socialist democracy? Or will we maintain the greatest constitutional republic on the face of the earth? And for me and my wife and our family, that choice is simple. We choose the American Republic. What really differentiates me from my opponent is a few principles. A belief in an environment where jobs and opportunities are abundant. A belief in a smaller, more limited federal government. And a belief that Utah lands should be controlled by the people of Utah. And if you look over the past two years, Congress has escalated our national debt to $14 trillion. My opponent, uh, who is Democrat Jim Matheson, voted in the last two years to raise our debt ceiling by $2 trillion. He voted for every stimulus bill. He voted for cash for clunkers. And most recently, he was the key vote to making sure that Congress adjourned before giving us an extension of the Bush tax cuts. Now that's significant for every single American family because it means on January 1st, 2011, you could be facing one of the largest tax hikes in American history, thanks to our congressman. I believe what, the, what we ought to be doing is balancing our budget, enacting real fiscal spending limitations, and we ought to be finding ways to return access and control of Utah lands to the people of Utah. I think if we do those, then we begin to see a return of what is the most prosperous and abundant economy on the face of the earth. And during Morgan's visit, he was joined by Mike Lee to do some joint campaigning where they received a few honks after waving on the corner of Main Street and 500 East along with both of them attending Chamber of Commerce and Rotary Club luncheons in Duchesne and Uinta counties. The next morning, I had the opportunity to interview Mike Lee and have him answer the same questions of why he's running and why he's the best choice to represent the Uinta Basin. Let's go there now. I've come to believe that our federal government is too big and too expensive, and that's why I got into this race. Uh, it requires us to work three or four or five months out of every year just to pay our federal tax bills. And then it t has the audacity to tell us that's not enough because we've accumulated a debt that within about a year's time will have reached $15 trillion. That's a lot of money. There are a lot of people right here in the Uinta Basin who don't make $15 trillion in a whole year. And yet that's what we owe to the federal government. When you divide that number by 300 million Americans, it works out to about $50,000 a head. A lot of people don't make that much money in a whole year. And yet that's what even a newborn baby, born today, owes to the federal government. That's not right. There's a better way to do things. And that way, I believe, is prescribed by that 223-year-old governing document. 
uh, whose anniversary we celebrated just a couple weeks ago. The U.S. Constitution outlines the federal government's powers on a limited basis. It says the federal government's supposed to be in charge of national defense, regulating interstate and foreign trade, uh, establishing a uniform system of weights and measures, trademarks, copyrights, patents, bankruptcy laws, a postal system, just a few other basic things. It doesn't have the power to be all things to all people, and it's been acting as if it does. That's created the problems, and it's stifling our economy. And we can do better. We will do better when we start following it. The reason I think yeah, I'm the right candidate uh, in this race has to do with the fact that uh, I have an undying devotion toward restoring what I refer to as the constitutional debate in Congress, asking the difficult questions that haven't been asked, uh, at least not nearly enough, for about 75 years in Congress. When Congress starts to consider a new piece of legislation or is considering creating a new federal program, it needs to first ask the question, regardless of whether or not the courts will allow us to exercise this power, is this a power that we can, in good faith and good conscience, reconcile with the text and the history of the Constitution? I'll do that. I'll make that argument. I'll, in, uh, I'll initiate that debate. And if we can initiate that debate in Congress, it'll happen and we'll start reining in the federal government. Now to football high school scores. Our Basin teams did a great job this week in bringing in wins. Uint had a bye this week, but Union brought in a win against Carbon with the 28-6 score. Braxton Nelson led the win with two touchdowns. Way to go, Cougars. Uh, Duchesne had defeated another team in overtime. They have defeated another team in overtime. The Eagles jumped out to a 21-0 lead before the Monticello Buckaroos battled back shutting down the Eagles defensively in the second half. Braden to Spain rushed for 226 yards though and three touchdowns, including Duchesne's extra time score, as Duchesne found a way to grab the win, leaving a score of 29 to 27. And Altamont's punishing ground attack led the Longhorns to a non-region win over Milford. Zach Hatch ran for 175 yards and two scores while Kyle Foy chipped in 139 yards and one score. Dalton Smith led Altamont's defense with 10 tackles. Along with that, Dathan Panis also got a touchdown that gave a commanding lead for the Longhorns that ended up with a score of 39 to nine. The St. James Catholic Church Winter Games will be held Saturday, November 13th. Make sure to put this on your calendar now. The event is used as a fundraiser for charity purposes. The annual Uinta Arts Council juried photo show is now on display through the 29th of October. The council brings in judges from out of the area and they are always impressed with the talent the basin engenders. As you can see from this quick look, there are some amazing photos on display. Go to the Western Heritage Museum to see the rest of the show. It is much better to see the show in person. Even in high definition, it just won't do the best show portrait any justice. Why am I running and what are my qualifications for this position? Well, ultimately I'm running because of my kids. Most people have some children, some offspring. I have five. And uh, about a year ago my youngest was born. And, you know, just looking into her eyes as she was just fresh here on earth and uh, you know taking her first first breaths realizing how innocent and um, vulnerable she was um, I realized that she was burdened with you know th about thirty seven thousand dollars of federal debt at that point in time and uh, three hundred some odd thousand dollars of unfunded liabilities today that's grown to forty four thousand dollars in debt and uh, three hundred and fifty seven thousand unfunded liabilities and that ultimately is why I'm running in this race because here we have a generation that is much like ours, you know, we, we are obtaining some debt that was passed on by a future generation and we've increased it and now we're going to pass it off to these children who are up and coming but they haven't had a say, I mean, they don't have a vote, they don't have anything and uh, you know, that to me I think is one of the things the Founding Fathers fought for was uh, not to have taxation without representation. And so I'm kind of passionate about that. I'm passionate about uh, what we leave for our children. Thomas Jefferson said it was immoral for one generation to pass on their debt to another. 
And uh, so that ultimately is why I'm in this race. I believe strongly in the principles that our country was founded on, and I believe it's our responsibility to make sure that we pave the way for our children to have the same opportunity or better opportunities than we've had. And qualifications, well, I'm not a politician. I'm just a father, just a dad, and uh, I've never run in for elective office before. Um, about the only experience I've ever had in, in this sort of an arena was when I was in high school doing speech and debate. And that, that's about it. So other than my passion and uh, my love of my, my children and, and everyone's children in the future, um, you know, th those would be my qualifications. I love the Constitution and uh, I believe everyone should, should know and understand it. Well, thanks for joining us on the Basin Bulletin. We hope to see you again right here for the next broadcast.